up guys Baker here very excited for this awesome tutorial we got the uh, little HUD lock-ons and I uh, have them for download and this will also be a tutorial on how to make two of them I'm not gonna go over all of them but um, here are the ones that I created here's number one just a simple little uh, spinning triangles I'm gonna show you that one pretty easy to make lock-on two this one is a spinning circle kind of gear thingy. Um, this one is actually kind of big um, because I'll show you why later. Um, I'm not going to play that one right now. This one's a little screen spinning popping up. Got some random wigglies and a grid. Uh, this one is what? Almost like a predator effect. Got some triangles coming in and uh, pretty sweet. Number six. I don't know what this was. This is just me messing around, you know, coming in. Ding, ding. I don't know. And number seven, I don't know what this was either. Just some randomness and, uh, cool. So, uh, let me just, uh, show you how to make them really quick and I'll show you how to use them. So, let's make a new comp. And, uh, I like to make these 720 by 720. Make this about, I don't know, two seconds. I mean, your lock-ons don't need to be very long, so we get this, and um, what I'm going to do is actually go to the rectangle tool and go to the polygon tool, and we'll just go in the middle here and then just make a shape, and then we'll go down to the contents, polystar 1, polystar path, and we can uh, adjust the points and, uh, you know, make kind of shapes and stuff. So we're going to set it down to 3 to make a triangle. We're going to rotate this so it's flat, so let's make this... Uh, I think I use 180. There we go. And uh, outer radius, so that's going to be how big it is, right? Um, what I'm going to do is actually scoot this up so it's almost to the top, something like that. Probably make it a little bit smaller. Yeah. And we're going to make a new null object, so make that too. And on the shape layer again, if you turn on your transparency, you'll see it's just the uh, triangle outline. So, if we go to Stroke, we'll turn the Opacity down to 0, and then go to Fill, and then Fill its Opacity 100, and we'll make it red. Now, I also want to make it a little bit less pointy, so if I go to the Type and turn the Roundness up a little bit, we can get this cool little bulging, or, uh, whoa, inverse stuff. That is interesting. I mean, there's so many different possibilities you can do. I'm just going to set this up to, like, 25%. And then I'm going to push S for scale, uncheck the link, set this down to 50 for the X so we get a skinny triangle. All right. Now I'm going to duplicate this two times so we have three total. I'm going to parent one of them to the null. Now I'm going to take the null and rotate it to 120. Then parent a second one to the null, like that, and then rotate this again to 240 and then parent the last one to the null. Now, if we just rotate the null how we want it, um, the whole thing will rotate as a whole. So, keyframe the stopwatch, move to the end, and let's rotate this two times. So now we just get these spinning triangles. And that's how I made that one. Pretty, pretty sweet. All right, um, let's, uh, let's make this one right here. Spinning kind of gear thingy. So, we'll delete all that. Come on, delete. There we go. So we'll make a new solid, and it doesn't matter what color. And we'll go to the masks and ellipse tool. Double click, and we get a circle. Now, what I'm going to do is actually double click on one of the points and then get the uh, grabber thingy. Hold shift, and for Mac, it's command, and PC, it's control. So I'll hold both of those, and we get it in the center. And uh, just somewhere around that size should be fine. Now, we're going to go and search up stroke and generate stroke and we'll set this to uh, our mask and transparent so we only get where we go so we get an outline brush size bigger there we go brush size needs to be bigger maybe maybe 10 depending how thick you want it and uh, we can pick a color we'll just pick red for right now and that's good we're done just kidding, we're going to duplicate that solid and scale this one up a little bit bigger, so maybe around there, and delete the stroke. 
Instead, we're going to put on Vegas. Generate Vegas, put that on. All right, and um, we're going to change it to Mask. I feel like I've done this before. And uh, Transparent. And we're going to set the size, the width up. And uh, we get these cool dots. Change the segments down to 6. And uh, we get that cool thing. And then we're just going to keyframe the rotation so it will spin around the side like that. Like, like this. And we're going to change the color to red. And we can also fix the size so it fits a little bit nicer. And uh, that's basically that lock on. Um, if I have time, I want to do this one really quick. This one's pretty sweet and elaborate. Pretty awesome. All right, I'm going to delete those really quick. All right, uh, new solid. Square solid. All right. Ellipse tool. Double click. Circle. Yes. Duplicate the mask. And we're going to go to subtract and subtract this in a little bit so we get that. And uh, that's pretty cool. Now I'm going to get the uh, rectangle tool. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can see this. And uh, just kind of make a, oops, make sure your layer is selected. And I'm going to make a rectangle mask right in the middle around there. And set this mask 3 to subtract. And you can resize it to get how filled in you want like this. So probably around there should be nice. All right. Duplicate that one, and we're going to delete the mask 3 so we get that ring back, but then just change the mask 1 expansion in so we get this uh, little inner ring. See that? That's what we got there. Okay. Now, uh, what else did I have? Uh, another inner ring. So let's, uh, let's duplicate this one and push MM. Now we're going to expand these in some more. So just uh, make another ring like that. Play with the expansion to get uh, the inner ring. And um, I'm going to cut out a triangle piece. So I'm going to go to the polygon tool. And uh, just go in the middle here and draw another shape. So that's good. Now I'm going to go to the polystar path. Make it three points so we get a triangle. And uh, just kind of center this. Probably make it a little bit nicer in the middle. Something like that. And we'll go to the stroke down to the zero and then the fill up to 100 again. So we get this triangle, right? Now what we're going to do is actually use a track mat on the inner ring. So the track mat should be not alpha mat. There we go. Alpha inverted. So this cuts out the triangle. And of course, you can still change the size of the triangle. And, uh, cuts out how much how much you want so that looks good right there I'm going to duplicate the triangle shape layer turn it back on and then just change the size of this one by going to the path and change it so it's uh, kind of tiny like that and actually I want to rotate it so it's like the other way something like that, that looks cool and go a little bit smaller all right, so right, so now let's uh, start animating this a little bit. So the very outer ring, which should be the bottom one, push R for rotation, keyframe, move forward, rotate this up to the top, so that's 180. All right. Now the insides, I want to rotate, so we're going to rotate the track mat triangle, rotation, keyframe, and spin this maybe one time. I don't know. It's going to rotate that one a little bit faster, maybe two times. We only make a difference here. And we're going to rotate the uh, the inner triangle as well two times. So keyframe, move forward, and two times. All right, so that's all kind of spinning together. Um, what I'm going to do is uh, after maybe 30, 40 frames, have the inner red triangle. Push S for scale. Keyframe, go backwards, scale us down to zero. So it uh, kind of pops up like that. That's kind of cool. And I also want to animate the back ring a little bit. So if we select that, get our rectangle tool again, and make a horizontal rectangle, something like that. Set this one to subtract, and then we're going to keyframe this expansion. 
So we're going to go to like one second and uh, pick our expansion where we want it to end. So maybe something tiny like this. Keyframe, move backwards. And now I'm just going to expand this so it's kind of not even showing. So here's what we got. We got this triangle coming in and then the outside is like uh, filling up and we get that kind of effect. And that's how I just kind of made that little lock on and um, let me show you how to use it now. So I have this clip, right? He's coming in, it's twixtered when he's about to shoot and then he shoots. So go ahead and take uh, a new null object and we're gonna tr uh, little hand motion track the guy. So if I go when the Twixter starts, I'm going to take this uh, no object and put it, um, let's put it on his, his stomach. All right, stomach or his head or whatever you want. Push P for position, keyframe, move forward a little bit, and then just kind of fix it. Move forward a little bit, fix it until the end of the, uh, the Twixter. So, I mean, he's not moving very much, that's why Twixter is very helpful. Um, but a little bit of movement does sell the effect. So we're going to bring in, uh, let's start with lock on one. And we get this cool thingy. All right. Oh, and um, normally, this is a good little quick tip. Boom. Normally, they're going to be about two seconds long. Now, if you need it longer, what you can do is uh, loop it. These are, uh, a couple of them are pretty, pretty good looped up. So what you do is right click interpret footage main, go to the bottom here and loop, let's say two or three times, and that extends the length of it by not changing the speed, it's just looping it. So it'll loop uh, pretty nicely, I set it up like that for you guys. And uh, we'll set the transfer mode to add, and I look a little bit better with color correction, there we go. Now what you want to do is uh, parent the lock on to the null object, like that. And then what we can do is take the lock on, position it how we want, we can scale it down maybe 50%, you know, put it on his head or just on his body, and uh, it'll look, look pretty nice. It'll just pop on, spin around on his, his body, his face, or whatever you want. And uh, there's a couple ways to animate it on, animate it off. What you can do is make this one fly in. So after a half a second, push S for scale keyframe, move backwards, and just scale this up really huge. So what that'll do is uh, come out, come in from the sides, look like it's actually locking on, spinning on them, and then when the twixter ends, you can just, you know, trim it or something. Alright, so let's just uh, go over the other examples that I have for you. Number two looks like this. This is also already looped up uh, two times for you. We'll set this to add. And uh, again, you know, you can uh, animate it in how you want, but uh, make sure this is parented. And then just move this into position. I'm going to have it around his entire body this time. So something like that looks cool. And, you know, just pop on spinning around him. Now, if you don't like the red, what you can do is actually search up hue and saturation. Drag that onto your lock on. And all you got to do is rotate the master hue so we get some green, some yellows, you know, any of those colors. So, a little bit laggy. What's going on? Come on. There we go. Get some nice blue. That looks pretty cool. Or uh, you can do colorize or just tint it white, whatever you want. But uh, motion tracked, uh, parent it to the null and stuff. What else I got here? Lock on number three. What is this one? Oh, so this is the extra large one. And the reason it's extra large is because if you want it to the side, you can still have this line going all the, all the way across, all the way down, or whatever you want. So we'll set this one to add as well. And we'll just kind of fit this around his body. Now if it's too big or too small, of course, you can just scale it up or down. But just be careful, if you scale it too far down, you'll see the edge at the bottom. So this works for pretty much close-up kills. No, nothing really long distance that won't really work, but um, you know, push, uh, position it there, pick up to the knoll, and uh, there you go. Motion tracks got a little bit of scanning grid. You can't really see it because I'm on low res right now, but uh, it's all good. A um, couple more examples. Number four. This one's kind of cool. It's a blue screen, and of course you can change the color. Set this to add. And what we'll do is uh, go here and position it, probably scale this down. Oh, 
And if you don't like the aspect ratio kind of size, if you unlink the scale, you can you know stretch it wide, animate it that way maybe, or if you want it shorter or longer, you know. But set it back to a hundred, comma hundred, and link, uh, lock it back up, and just kind of fit his body right there. Again, pick whip, and you know there you go. So what this looks like is. Um, it spins, opens up, spins, and opens up like that, and uh, looks pretty cool. A couple more. Stay with me, guys. Lock on number five is a little predator triangles kind of thing I was going for. Um, what you want to do is actually wait till it's out of the frame right here. Push P for position, keyframe, and then after a little while, then move it into position like that. And of course, we can. Uh, Pick whip to the null object, but there you go, comes in, slides up like that. So pretty cool. Boom. Lock on number six. This one was uh, a little weird. I don't know what I was doing, but set it to add, and I uh, just I don't know, place it over his entire body. I guess. You know, these aren't really meant for far away stuff, but some of them might work for far away stuff. But this one just kind of opens up. Uh, these are pretty much all the same by now. You should kind of get the hang of what's going on. And, um, you know, this one, that triangle one we made, set it to add. If you don't like how bright it is like that, you can actually uh, turn down the opacity just a little bit. Makes it not too intense. And again, if you don't like that red triangle, if you're using these uh, downloaded overlays, again, just hue and saturation. And, uh, it'll change just the inside color, so like that blue. So you can either make these by hand, like this example, or, you know, just use these presets. Pretty cool. Uh, go ahead and download them in the description. Make sure you leave a like, a comment, a favorite. Probably share this to your friends. This is pretty cool. I know they're not the best uh, HUDs and, and target lock-ons, but I thought they're pretty interesting, pretty fun to make. I hope you guys enjoy it. And um, that's about it. Pretty sweet stuff. Boom! Alright, like the video, you guys. Peace.